We now turn to an important case study of how to engage learners with two senior staff from the, 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 the excuse me from the Victorian Department of Education and Training, Jane Ward, Executive Director, Higher Education and Workforce Division, and Desh Balasamaranian, Manager, Learner Pathways Unit. They will speak about the state of government's Reconnect program, which supports Victorians to overcome barriers preventing them from engaging in education, training, and employment, and provide support into further study or employment pathways. Over to you. Thank you very much, Freya, and it's a pleasure to be here this afternoon. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm coming to you from the Bunurong lands of the people of the Eastern Kulin Nation in uh, Bayside, Melbourne, in Victoria. I pay my respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders past, present and emerging, and particularly acknowledge any Aboriginal colleagues who might be uh, participating on the session today. Uh, so thank you. It's really a wonderful opportunity to co-present with my colleague Desh um, and share with you the Victorian, government's the Victorian Government Department of Education and Training's vision to ensure that all Victorians have equitable access to um, quality education and training. Uh, we might go to the, the next slide. I'll give you a very quick overview of, of my division. As was mentioned in the introduction, um, I'm Executive Director for the Higher Education and Workforce Development Team. And that's a team that actually sits within the Economic Recovery portfolio in the Department of Education and Training. Um, so it's really very focused on inclusive economic recovery. Uh, so we work very proactively with um, industry to develop training and skills solutions for Victoria's future workforce. Um, and the, a, a key component to that is, is enabling the supportive pathways that assist people experiencing disadvantage to access the education and get the employment outcomes that they want. And that's where we'll dive into more detail around the reconnect program and specifically what that provides. Um, it's worth noting that my team also drives the Victorian government's um, agenda to engage and work in partnership with the university sector. Um, there was a, um, a very significant um, funding commitment, $350 million in the Victorian Higher Education State Investment Fund um, as part of the response to the pandemic. And I think it's also worth um, noting that, that disadvantage is um, also felt within the university sector. So we really do try to look across the whole system. Um, but certainly the Reconnect program that we'll talk to you about today um, has a, a much um, more specific focus. Um, in terms of the strategic context for Reconnect, um, I wanted to share with you that we're actually um, sort of re-examining, I guess, our own um, strategy around uh, learner pathways um, and uh, wanting to ensure that um, what we're doing um, really does deliver that um, connected and holistic uh, set of solutions uh, that we uh, strive for. So we'll, uh, I'll, yeah, thank you. Next slide. That's great. So in terms of um, the learner pathways uh, strategy, we're aware that, you know, we have a range of different pathway support programs of which Reconnect is, is one. It's a real um, flagship, but they have grown up independently of each other and we want to take the opportunity to look at the um, strategic whole and make sure um, that uh, that there is um, coherence across them that we're really getting that we're maximizing um, impact um, and also that uh, looking across the whole of Victorian government it's a space where there is a lot of activity um, a very real focus on addressing disadvantage and we just want to make sure that um, that the programs that we run out of the Department of Education and Training um, are well recognized and um, uh, really fulfill uh, their purpose um, and of course as we all are um, we are wanting to re-examine them um, in terms of the impact of COVID um, I know some of your sessions earlier today um, focused already on accessibility, engagement and the loss of those things um, that have been challenged by, uh, by the pandemic and of course more recently in some parts of Australia by um, natural disasters. Uh, so the, um, we'll go to the Reconnect program um, specifically now. Uh, as you can see there, that's really our, our own um, logic map that, that guides us. Um, and it's um, about helping Victorians to overcome disadvantage, to remove the barriers that prevent them from engaging and succeeding in education and training. Um, 
a lot of those barriers are non-vocational um, and we, we recognise that and uh, that's a, a key um, focus of ReConnect um, is, to is to remove financial barriers, um, to provide place-based solutions um, and to recognise a combination of outcomes right across non-accredited, pre-accredited um, and accredited training. Um, there's a lot of... Um, uh, work that also goes on with our reconnect providers. So we do work um, with uh, across 79 local government areas um, in Victoria with uh, 34 providers. I think we'll be hearing from um, one of those uh, shortly. Um, and working with that workforce um, to build capability uh, to support disadvantaged learners is a key part of uh, reconnect as well. So you can see there the way that we um, like to, to see the connections um, across um, uh, meaningful pathways that then lead to sustainable um, vocational uh, opportunities and outcomes. Sometimes uh, employment might be the first outcome and then the education and training is the enabler, but we really have to be able to see the big picture around the social, economic and systems pressures. Um, so hence, um, our learner pathway strategy really needs to look at those partnerships that we build across government, um, with other departments across the community sector and the vet sector, so that we're really um, gearing the whole system uh, to provide the best uh, outcomes for disadvantaged learners. Uh, there's a little bit more detail there about the, um, the reconnect um, program uh, elements. Uh, I do want to allow a bit of time for, for Desh as well to talk you through at a more operational level because I know that's of great um, interest to this um, uh, to this audience. But as you can see there, those those key themes we keep coming back to is around how to engage with the, um, the participants who may not be connected with services, um, how to really wrap those supports around them and ensure that they have the connection between the training that they do um, and uh, education uh, and employment outcomes. Uh, we do have a, a slightly busy slide around the, the program logic. Um, and the key point uh, to emphasize there is really how interconnected all of those uh, key elements are. Um, we do stay connected with um, participants over an 18 month period. And I think that's a, a really critical um, success factor that it is about deep engagement um, uh, that provides a very tailored solution to individual needs. Uh, so I might pause there and just to hand over to uh, my colleague Desh, um, who can talk to you a little bit more about from his experience about the, um, uh, the outcomes that have been achieved. Thank you, Jane. Um, I'll just follow on through sharing some of the outcomes uh, that we have experienced through ReConnect. So I think one of the things to kind of consider is who is actually participating in, in ReConnect. So when we are looking at the who, that kind of gives you the, the barriers that Jane has actually talked to you about. So we're looking at people who have long-term unemployed with significant low uh, qualifications. So we've got 90% of our participants with no prior qualifications. 80% of them have been unemployed for a period of six months or longer. And one of the exciting news is that 60% of the, the people who are participating in our program are women and 18% and are over age uh, 45. And, and um, there is a significant youth fo focus, which was the initiation of the program. So 54% of the people are under the age of 25. We've also made sure the program supports specific uh, uh, requirements within our department or priorities, which may be the, the right word. So we're trying to support asylum seekers on specific visas within the program. We are focusing on young people invaded by social justice and child protection issues. We are trying to engage um, some of our Koori members of the community. So we've been able to increase the participation of Koori members at about 7%. 35% of the people are culturally and linguistically diverse. And, and also 30% uh, acknowledge as having a disability. So th these are some of the kind of key things to know. And we've also been able to transition about 1,700 people each year into meaningful uh, vocational pathways. So I know it, it only says here 65%, but it's actually much higher because we've been a bit harsh on ourselves. So we, th this number only includes where there's been an employment outcome or a vocational uh, education training 
uh, that, that can be measured. But you can also look at things like people dropping off with a driving license or a, a forklift license and getting a, a temporary job. We haven't included that within the 65. So the, the actual outcome is much bigger, uh, but, but we want to be able to kind of be, be firm about meaningful and long-term outcomes for our participants. One of the, the biggest strengths of the program, I know I'm almost out of time, well, I'm out of time. I'll wrap up with stating that um, the, the way that um, Jane explained about making sure access is available in all 79 LGAs across the state, I think that's a great strength. Making sure the program is learner-centered, but also ensuring our providers are enabled to deliver the program and, 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 and we are measuring the outcomes such as this. And to make sure there's a collaborative approach between the TAFEs, the learn local RTOs and the community sector so we can create a, a great um, impact within the most marginalized communities within the Victoria. So that's really kind of a wrap up, I think, at, at the end. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, excellent. And, and really like that practical learned experience about how much time it takes. We, we're carrying on with the thread of this conversation with a panel of six speakers in the next session. And I'd invite Desh and Jane to stay with us for that.